Doctor, what are your thoughts, uh, having the experience that you do, uh, thoughts about traditional cancer treatments like chemo and radiation? My goal always, having been trained as a conventional researcher, is that we all have to work together. It's, it sounds like a cliche, but I really mean that. You know, as my lecture mm -hmm. today, I was talking about the fact that some of the greatest conventional doctors are a place like the Mayo Clinic, and if I have a diagnostic dilemma, or I have a patient I can't figure out what the problem is, I'll send them to the Mayo Clinic. And that's the way it should be, and we should work together. And the Mayo Clinic doctors are very willing to do that, even if you're alternative. Other institutions are not so willing. but. A lot of conventional oncology isn't that effective. I mean, there was a study just came out a month ago in Nature magazine, which is one of the preeminent science journals, which said finally that most chemotherapy for most cancers doesn't work, and they explained the biochemical reasons why it don't, why it doesn't. There are a few cancers that do respond really well to chemo, but they're rare cancers and not that common. Mm. There are over 100 different types of cancer, depending on what book you read. The ones that respond are testicular cancer, which Lance Armstrong was diagnosed with, acute lymphocytic leukemia childhood, uh, choriocarcinoma, which is a rare cancer of pregnancy, some lymphomas, uh, but other than those few cancers, most cancers do not respond to chemotherapy, even though they've been looking into it now since 1946 was the first effort to look into synthetic drugs to treat cancer. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't work that well, despite the billions of academic research funding that has been allocated to it. There are a few cancers where it works. Hodgkin's disease. 80% of early stage Hodgkin's can be cured with conventional chemo, and I'm the first person to say that's wonderful. Dr. DeVita, who used to be head of the NCI, first discovered the MOP chemo regimen, which is very effective for the treating Hodgkin's. Um, other cancers, it just doesn't do as much. There are a few where it works really well. For 90% of cancers, chemotherapy is not effective. So for for 90% of those those cancers where it's not effective, why is it still used as much as it is? That's a good question. One of the reasons I really like the Mayo Clinic is the oncology team there are extraordinarily honest. Not only are they extraordinarily competent physicians, the best in the country, but they're very honest. And I have patient after patient who's been to the Mayo Clinic with some kind of advanced cancer where the Mayo Clinic oncologist says, I'm not going to treat you because what we have to offer will not help you. Mm -hmm place like Sloan Kettering, I have patients who have been there with the same kind of cancers and they treat them with chemotherapy. Why the difference? I, I really respect the Mayo Clinic because they are famously honest with patients to the, to the point where it's, it's just amazing to see. And I, They've saved patients' lives because some of the patients I presented today in my lecture were diagnosed with advanced cancer like pancreatic and the Mayo Clinic didn't want to treat them. Because of that, then they started looking into alternative therapies and that mm -hmm. saved their lives. Um, but most oncologists don't follow the Mayo tradition, being that honest with patients. They will treat patients even though the literature shows that the chemotherapy doesn't work. Some of it's economic. It's hard to, you know, it's, it's hard to say that because you're accusing oncologists of doing things for money, but some of it's economic. I've seen mm -hmm. patients come into me with cancers treated with chemo regimens that no literature supports could offer benefit, and yet they get it. They, they get the chemo. And there are drugs, there are chemo drugs like Avastin. The people, lay people don't realize this. It costs $10,000 a month. It was being used routinely for breast cancer, even though there was absolutely no evidence it worked for breast cancer. Finally, the FDA rescinded its approval of Avastin for breast cancer. Why was it ever approved for breast cancer? There was just anecdotal evidence. And it wasn't cheap, and it was terribly toxic, and it cost $10,000 a month, and a lot of it's pure profit to the drug companies and to the oncologists. Mm -hmm. What is also not generally appreciated is oncologists don't make their money from the fees from the office visit. They make their money for the sale, from the sale of chemo and the other drugs in the clinic. Uh, for ex they're allowed to do that. There, there are government regulations which allow oncologists to make money off the sale of chemo to their patients without telling the patient. They're not required by government regulations to do that because their lobby is so strong. Most patients don't realize the oncologist says, you know, come into the office, we'll give you the chemo. And most oncologists now give chemo in the office. They don't do it in the hospital. And they provide the medication. What they don't realize is they're charging the insurance company huge amounts for this and making an enormous amount of money. The Wall Street Journal had an article. The average oncologist is making hundreds of thousands of dollars from the sale of chemo in their office. So there is, unfortunately, a financial incentive for oncologists to use regimens that are very profitable even though they, they don't work. Mayo Clinic mm -hmm. doesn't work like that. Mm -hmm. They stick to the science and I really admire them. So I think a lot of it's really profit driven.